Live. The book of Daniel is closely related to the book of Revelation. It is crucial in understanding the current upheaval and posturing taking place by governments around the world. We will be in chapter 3 of Daniel today. You remember our three companions known as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Their documentation is an excellent model as to what we should expect and how we should respond during our own non-compliance with the law of confusion, the beast system. In the 18th year of his reign, King Nebuchadnezzar made an image six by 60 cubits. Was it a two-dimensional image? Scripture is silent as to what the image was, but it is reasonable to conclude that Nebuchadnezzar made an image of himself. It was to be the new God for worldwide worship. The number 666 in Revelation signifies continuance by a multiple of 10, identifying the very same system and its completion. It also implies a third dimension. Here's the catch. At the sound of all kinds of instruments, call it notifications, nations, people, and languages, everyone was to drop and worship this image. Of course, there is always a remnant who can discern good from evil and who understand the con game and have the courage to act against it. Now, if you did not worship, you are committing blasphemy against this new God. The punishment for blasphemy to be thrown into a pre-stoked fiery furnace. Informants and snitches reported on our three companions because they said no. They would not bow. So Nebuchadnezzar flew into a rage. The three deemed ungrateful troublemakers had, he had placed in high office rebuked his dubious generosity. How dare they? The government was not asking too much to require this bit of homage. Verse 15 shows Nebuchadnezzar's self-aggrandizement. Who is that God who can deliver you out of my hand? The three were given another chance to comply. Here's what they said. This would be verse 17 and 18. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us out of the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand O king but if not be it known to thee O king that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up this is precisely the position we will take when our time comes it made no difference if they were set free or not there would be no bowing before Nebuchadnezzar's image they were not raptured out. They were protected within the furnace. This is about trust, regardless of the predicament. So Nebuchadnezzar ordered the heat of the furnace turned up sevenfold. It must have been quite a sight to see them try to accomplish that feat. Flames shooting out all the openings and cracks. The excessive heat and fire shooting out the top of the furnace actually killed those men who brought our three friends up. Some of these furnaces had an opening in the side for stoking and retrieving the, the molten metal. You could see in. So Nebuchadnezzar enjoyed a little sweet revenge. What? What happened? Didn't they drop three men bound into that furnace? Look, there are four men loose in there, totally unhurt, walking around in the flames. Singing praises to Yah. Who is the fourth? The fourth is like the Son of God. Nebuchadnezzar's fiery furnace is a picture of our own refinement. A gold-bearing rock must be heated to just the right point to extract the precious metal. We are the called, chosen, and faithful in the face of extreme danger. We have made a stand, as many have before us. We guard the commandments of Yah and have the testimony of Yeshua the Messiah. We are the good ground. We have put an end to fear of what they will say about us, where they may imprison us, and what they may do to our bodies. We desire nothing from this fallen world, because we have seen a glimpse of the age to come. The creator of the universe 
has written his law in our heart and in our mind. 